praise God. We record our messages so that we can send our messages all over the world. There are people in many countries who are being blessed by the online church. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, your host and pastor of Back to Basics Ministries, and I thank God for this exciting ministry. I've been in the ministry for, oh, it's been uh, 45 years. 45 years ago in January, I preached my first sermon, and I thank God for that. I've been preaching for 45 years and uh, pastoring for many years, and I thank God God has been good to me. He's brought me through many dangers, toils, and snares. I've seen God move in the lives of people, not only in this nation, but in other continents and in other nations. And so this is a worldwide outreach ministry where we extend the love of Jesus Christ and preach the gospel to whosoever will. And all you need to do is just go on YouTube or on our website or send an email and just open uh, the recording if you can't be on live with us and the gospel goes forth. I thank God for the gospel. I thank God for you. I praise God for who he is and we give God the glory and the honor. We thank you. Thank you for uh, all who are listening in, and if you would like to give a shout out, just say hello. Just unmute your phone right now and just come on and uh, say hello to us. Hey, Pastor, it's Melanie. Melanie Bias, praise God. Melanie Bias, she's a very precious person who lives in Gray, Georgia. You st are you still precious, Melanie? I don't know, but I'm still in gray. <laughs> she says she doesn't know, but she's still in gray, Georgia. Melanie will always be precious, no matter where she is. How are you doing down there? Thank you. It's a beautiful day. The sun's out, and I'm just going to have a good one. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jackie was down your way yesterday in Columbus, uh, near your way yeah. for, for a conference. She was busy, busy, busy in a conference. Came home exhausted. Uh, so I, I guess she didn't have a chance to call you, but we will hook up sometime soon, Melanie. Okay? Yeah, actually, I, yeah, I think you're probably you are probably closer, at least the airport, than Columbus is to me. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we're not so that far from the airport. Yeah, it would have been really uh, out of her way to come through here. Okay, but we're gonna get down there one of these days. Okay, so look, look for us. <laughs> All right, That's praise good. God. God bless you. That's All Melanie right. Melanie Bias, everybody. She's precious. She's from Gray, Georgia. Well, we thank God. We thank God for all of you, and uh, thank you for joining us. We thank God for those of you who are listening by way of the recording. Many people listen by way of the recording, and um, we, what we're doing this year, we're encouraging people to seek a local fellowship, a local fellowship, and we're helping to plant people in local fellowships during this year. And then in September, uh, Back to Basics Online Church will come on in the evenings, at the evening hour, where we can minister to ministers and minister to the body of Christ. So we praise God. Well, you don't find too many online churches trying to plug people into local churches. But we just want you to know that we believe that we are a call by God to help supply the local church with, with spirit-filled and, and well-trained and well-taught people who, who hear the word of God and are willing to go back into the local situation and help local ministries. And we thank God for this. So I thank God for this mighty ministry. I give God the praise for all he's doing in our lives, and we thank God. Okay, we're going to look at uh, the word of God today. I don't see our friend Jackie Fisher. Jackie usually reads our scripture, but Jackie has gone back to her local church to help there. And we thank God, thank God for Jackie Fisher. Thank God for uh, Christy Carpenter. Christy is teaching Sunday school up in her local church in um, Kuna, Idaho. Uh, we've got Dustina and her family. They've gone back to their local church. So many people are, are are doing this. They've been trained. We've been training people in the Word of God for 
for two to three years now, and we're saying, okay, it's time to get back into the local church. Okay, praise God. And so uh, we're doing that, and um, come September, I'll be working in the local church, and then I'll uh, doing the online church on in the evening so with, so that we will minister healing, minister the word of God to God's preachers, teachers, prophets, apostles, evangelists, and members of the body of Christ. You see, there are bruised people all over this nation, and this nation needs healing. This nation, America, needs healing. And America, not only America, but the nations need healing. And God wants to heal and God is working through his people. And so we're, we're one of God's agents to work to, for the healing of this nation and the nations. And so we praise God. We, we ask that you support this ministry. We thank God for your love for this ministry, for your support. We give a shout out to our sister church, Back to Basics Ministries in uh, Kisumu, Kenya, where we help them to build their new facility last year and this year we're plastering the walls of the church inside and outside the pastor said we need to do this to keep the rain and the wind and the cold out and so we're we're raising our funds and we should be sending the, those funds out next week so we thank you for your support for this ministry we thank you that we can um, help plaster uh, it's important we're going to plaster that's the that's enforcing those walls with plaster so that you keep the air out and the cold air and the and the rain and the wind so that the saints can fellowship in comfort and then the pastor his his quarters will be in that church building so we will make sure hey, he's he's comfortable in living there and so you are about a great work ladies and gentlemen not only in helping to spread the gospel but also in helping a congregation to have a place for worship where people from all over the Kasumo area can come to this church where they can get water, water. We're going to be digging a well for them soon. Water and getting food and, and, and um, where they get the word of God, where they get ministered to, and where they're trained in the word of God. And then they go forth into western Kenya and they help supply uh, some uh, poor tribesmen, tribespeople uh, among the Turkana people. And so we thank God for God's love. We can't reach the whole world, but we can do what we can in the world that God has placed us in. Well, let's look at uh, the scriptures today. We're, I'm going to be reading from John chapter 3. And uh, so uh, download John chapter 3 or open your Bible to John chapter 3, a familiar passage of Scripture, uh, but a powerful message and a powerful charge for God's people. I'm going to be preaching today on the subject of let us return to loving one another. Oh, yeah. Hey, America, let us return to loving one another. Hey, world. Let us return to loving one another. And for many people who are listening, uh, many who, who are, 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 are new with this concept of loving one another and, and are, have been uh, tainted by the, the ugliness of this society and the corruption of the political scene and the, the lies that have been uh, spread by Satan and the hatred and the bitterness among people, let us love one another. We're followers of Jesus Christ. We preach and practice loving one another. So for many of us, we're going to return to loving one another. Many of us got thrown off base. There are people who have been thrown off base because of the, this political uh, circus here in the United States of America, this political circus where Republicans and Democrats are, have both been uh, uh, are fighting one another, and, and the sad thing about that is that the church is all involved in that. Well, wherever you find a Republican, you're going to find a church member. Wherever you find a Democrat, you're going to find a church member. But we believe that as we put our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will, we will rise above politics. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to spread our wings and soar like the eagle 
The Bible says, uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary and walk and not faint. And so let's look at John 3.16. Then later on I'm going to be reading more in the uh, Gospel of John. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, we've heard this scripture ever since we were knee high, since we were little children. We heard this is one of the basic scriptures that most people learn, those who, who uh, uh, go to church. But there is such a challenge in um, John 3.16. The challenge is that whosoever believeth in him, believeth in him. Well, what's it mean to believe in him? To believe in Jesus means that we commit our ways unto the Lord totally, totally, not just partially. We commit our lives to Jesus. We commit our ways to Jesus. We put Jesus first before politicians. We put Jesus first before leaders. We put Jesus first before husband and wife. We put Jesus first before children. We put Jesus first before our job. We put Jesus first before money. That's what we're talking about. So our subject is based on John 3.16. Let us return to loving one another. I'm going to challenge you. Well, let's put it this way. The Holy Spirit through me is going to challenge you today to return to loving people, to return to loving one another. And for many people listening, whether you're live with us or listening to the recording, many of you are going to make a commitment to Jesus to learn to love people, to love them no matter who they are, no matter what they've done, no matter what kind of people they are, that you're going to love them. We don't love the things people do, but we are, we are uh, compelled by the Lord. We have been given this divine assignment to love one another. So our scripture, John 3.16, let me just read a couple more verses. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Powerful scripture. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Father God, we come to you. This day, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. God, every one of us has sinned from the pulpit to the door. I have sinned against you. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, and create in us clean hearts. Father, there are people listening today whose hearts are have been made heavy, some because of sin, some because they have been victimized by the enemy Satan. Some have been blindsided by the enemy. And Lord, sin is, has entered into the camp. So we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Many are victims of sins in their families, in their household. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. iniquity. We come to you, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to love one another. Help us to walk in love as you have taught us to do. Lord, uh, uh, create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Father, for those who are listening to this message. I pray 
in the name of Jesus, that you will bless them, that they will abound in your grace and mercy, and that you will meet and supply every need, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to share, show you this, put this in front of the camera, a little package that was on my desk here in my studio this morning, a little package Jackie left a package. She's at the brick and mortar church at Shy Temple in 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 uh, Atlanta, where she attends faithfully on Sunday mornings. And and uh, give a shout out to Pastor Clements and all the saints there. But Jackie left this on my desk this morning, uh, so that she surprised me when I came down into my studio. And in this package, we have the prayer that she typed out. She's praying for me, and 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 she. Ex uh, extends her love through this prayer, and I appreciate you, Jackie, and I agree with your prayers, and Jackie, we pray every day, and we thank God, and then she sends me this little uh, Valentine's card, uh, Happy Valentine's Day, and um, uh, Valentine's Day is a few days from now, but uh, I think Based on what she says at the bottom, I'll be getting more of these each day until Valentine's Day. She's so sweet. You're so sweet, Jackie. And uh, a little note, a little love note on there, and I'm not going to tell you all what she says. And then she has in here a package of M&Ms. M&Ms. She knows, she knows I like chocolate. Uh, M&Ms. She's given me uh, an M&M's assortment package so that I'll have some munchies while I'm working in my office this week. And I thank Jackie for uh, this expression of her love. And uh, she'll be getting her gifts uh, as we approach Valentine's Day. Praise God. And so uh, we thank God. Thank God, you know, love is so important. It's so important that we love one another. And um, you might not have someone in your life whom you love or someone who loves you. You may not even be married, but we're to love one another. And with the love of Jesus Christ, and the love of Jesus Christ goes even beyond the love of a husband and a wife or, or a, 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 a fa family. Love, the love of Jesus Christ, um, you, we cannot even measure the love of Jesus Christ. But when we look at John 3.16, we get a glimpse into the mighty, powerful love that God has, not only for you and me, but for all mankind. Look at this scripture again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but should have everlasting life. God loved us so much, ladies and gentlemen. He sacrificed his only son. He allowed his son to die on the cross. We're talking about Jesus Christ. God loved you and me so much that God did not want to see us perish in our sins. Sin kills. God must Punish sin. Sin, for those who live in sin, they will perish. But God made a way possible, ladies and gentlemen, that you and I that, and, and, and anyone who hears this gospel, this is the good news, that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Begotten meaning he fathered one son. He fathered one son. God fathered one child through the Virgin Mary. And you read about that uh, in Matthew and Luke where God uh, appeared to Mary through the angel Gabriel and, 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 and shared with Mary, Hail Mary, thou art favored among women. You shall become pregnant, and, and that holy thing, that holy child in you shall become the son of God. God. And so God chose a virgin, a woman who had never known a man, never been touched by a man sexually. And, 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 and God impregnated her. And Mary said, well, how shall this be? Uh, I, I don't know a man. I've never known a man. I've never had sex with a man. And, and God said, this will be done by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
take this birth of Jesus very seriously. Take the life of Jesus very seriously. Uh, Jesus is more than a prophet. Hey, uh, 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 Islam, wake up. Jesus is more than a prophet. Jesus is the Son of God. Hey, Jewish people, wake up. He's more than a prophet. He is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. And uh, uh, many, many Jews missed the bus, missed the bus uh, when Jesus first came. And I have on my coffee cup here, dear God, and it's a picture of uh, two children waiting on the school bus. And it has on the back, dear God, if we miss the bus, will you send another one? If we miss the bus, will you send another one? And for the Jewish people, they missed the bus the first time. But then, since then, many Jews have come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And we thank God. We thank God for the great ministry of one of our students, Karen Herzog, and, uh, uh, and her ministry up in Pennsylvania. And many Jews have come to know Jesus and proclaim him as Savior and Lord. But there are still millions of Jews who are still in denial. And, and, and God's going to send the bus again for the Jews. The, the second coming, when the church is wrapped the Jewish people will still be on earth, and God is going to uh, demonstrate his love for the Jewish people at the Battle of Armageddon, where all the nations of the world will uh, order themselves against Israel for the final thrust against Israel to destroy the Jews, and the Lord Jesus Christ is going to uh, ride on a white horse uh, uh, at, with his army of angels and destroy all the enemies of the Jewish people. And the eyes of the Jewish people will be open, ladies and gentlemen. The church will be in the clouds witnessing Jesus, uh, destroying the enemies of the Jewish people in this final battle. And ladies and gentlemen, then the Jewish eyes will be open and they will proclaim Jesus as Messiah. Yes, the bus is coming back around the corner for the Jewish people, but the bus will not be coming for Gentiles. Let's get the record straight. The bus will not. These children are praying, God, if we miss the school bus, will you send another one? But if you, ladies and gentlemen, do not know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, don't miss the bus. Don't miss the bus. In other words, when you hear this gospel, get on board. Get on board while you can. Because when the gospel is no longer preached, when Jesus comes and raptures the church, or if you die before Jesus comes, there's no more opportunity. So get on the bus now. Get on board. Get on board. People get ready. There's a bus coming. Get on board now. How do I get on board? By believing the gospel, by believing that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Get on board, ladies and gentlemen. Repent of your sins, and, and thank God for allowing Jesus, his only begotten son, born of the Virgin Mary. Thank God for allowing his son to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus has already paid the price and paid the punishment for your sins and mine. So why should you perish out of unbelief when Jesus has already paid the price? Mary said, how shall these things be? And God said, this will be by the Holy Spirit who will overshadow you. And the Bible says Mary pondered these things in her heart. She never knew a man. Uh, she was married to Joseph, but she never knew a man. She was betrothed and then later married to G Joseph, but she never knew a man. And Joseph never touched her sexually until after the birth of Jesus. So Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ, and Jesus was born uh, uh of a, a sinless woman and, and, and uh, born of a, a, a woman who knew no sexual sin. Let's put it that way. Let's get it straight. For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But she 
he, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, and Jesus was born without sin. Jesus was the only one ever born without sin. And then the Bible says he died on the cross for you and me, and he became sin for us. He took all of our sins, and he took the punishment of our sins for you and for me. And so we rejoice in Jesus Christ. And so the next step is to receive Jesus Christ, to receive him. Now, I know there are many of you listening. You've got sin in your life, and you don't know how to get out of these situations you're in. Some of you are overwhelmed by sin. You don't know what to do. But here's, here's the key. Confess your sins. Tell God, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry for sinning against you. Please forgive me, Father. And then take the next step and, 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 and tell God, God, I believe. I believe John 3.16. I believe that you love me so much that you gave your only begotten son. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that he gave his life for me. And I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And by faith, I receive him as my Savior and Lord. Just as I asked Jackie to be my wife, and she's my wife, for life till death do us part, uh, in good times and bad times, for good or bad, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, uh, Jackie is my wife, and no matter what happens, she's stuck with me, and, 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 and I love her, and we are committed to marriage. The love of Jesus Christ goes even far beyond what Jackie and I can imagine as a married couple. And when you receive Jesus as Lord, you receive the one who was sent by God to die on the cross to pay the price for your sins. He came uh, to pay the price for your sins and for my sins. Ladies and gentlemen, respect him, honor him, and thank him, and receive him. Tell him, I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be my Lord. I make you my Savior, my Lord, and my God. And then commit yourself to him. Just as a man and a woman stand before an altar uh, with a preacher reading the Bible, and they, in the presence of God, they commit themselves to one another. We commit ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the commitment we make to Jesus Christ is greater than any commitment we can make in the world. In other words, when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, we're saying we thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. We thank you, and we worship you that you are Lord, you are God, and we surrender our lives to you. That is why the scripture says, we have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not us, but Christ lives in us. And the life that we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. The Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and live with him and he with me. Jesus promised. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and live with him and he with me. And when Jesus comes in, on your invitation, upon your invitation, he's not going to turn the door and push himself into your life. He's not going to open the door just because your mama was saved or your daddy was saved, or just because your grandfather built the church, or because your Uncle Willie uh, was the chairman of the deacon board. No, no, you must be born again. And there's only one way to be born again, that is to confess your sins, and then open the door, ask Jesus to come in to your life and live in you, and Commit yourself to him. You make a commitment to him. In other words, you die to sin and begin to live for Jesus. And that's the relationship for the rest of your life and my life, that we die to sin. That doesn't mean that we won't sin again. 
but it means that if we sin again, we can confess our sins and ask him to forgive us, and he will forgive us. But the most important thing is, whether you are in America or England or Afghanistan or in Turkey or in Russia or in China or in Kenya, no matter where you are, this gospel reaches people of every nation. This gospel, this good news that Jesus died on the cross for all of mankind, this gospel has gotten people saved all over the world. No matter what kind of political situation you're living in, no matter what kind of government you're under, when you make Jesus Christ your Savior and your Lord, you are saved forevermore, ladies and gentlemen. And then walk with Jesus. Learn about him. Read the Bible. Study the scriptures. Uh, uh, get into a church. If there's a church nearby you, go to that church. Uh, if there's no church nearby you, stay with the online church. We will teach you. We will train you. Learn how to pray uh, for one another, with one another. Learn how to walk in love to all mankind. And then when you commit your life to Jesus, that means you've got to stop hating people. No matter who they are, no matter what they've done, you can and I, we cannot hate anybody. We cannot be bitter towards anyone. We cannot show any animosity towards anyone. But we must walk in love. Yes, even when they bruise us, even when they talk about us, even when they uh, tweet of something negative or nasty about us, even when they send nasty emails, even when they put stuff on the uh, YouTube, even when they put stuff on the, the uh, Facebook page, we've got to forgive them and, and just as Jesus forgave us because the Bible says if we harbor sin in our hearts, if we know that there's sin in our hearts, God won't hear us. And so uh, there are a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, going through these religious motions. There are a lot of people sitting up in church right now. They sit up in church every Sunday. They look holy. Some are in leadership positions, and they have bitterness in their hearts. There are a lot of leaders in this nation, ladies and gentlemen. They have high-ranking office in this nation, but they hate people. They hate certain groups. They hate people because of their political persuasion. They hate people because of their skin color. They hate people because of their economics. But yet they're in church, and many, some of them are pastors. They are leaders in their churches. But ladies and gentlemen, do not be deceived because the Bible says God is not deceived. God is not mocked. You know, whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. You might be getting away with something right now and think you're getting over and and, uh, and, 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 and and you might be like a certain political leader. Uh, I'm exonerated. They found me innocent. But ladies and gentlemen, if there's sin in your life, God knows about it. Okay, the jury of your peers uh, may, may uh, exonerate you and set you free. And, and your colleagues might set you free. And those people whom you've paid and bought off, they might declare you free. But God knows the heart. God searches the heart, ladies and gentlemen. He knows. There is nothing that can escape God. Nothing can escape God. And God will repay. That is why he gives us this opportunity to return to loving one another. If by, the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he won't even hear me. I can talk religion. I can quote scripture. I can act religious, but God won't even hear me. People might be swayed. People might be persuaded. But ladies and gentlemen, when the deal goes down, you and I have to stand before God Almighty and give an account for the life that we live in this flesh. You and I. And nobody can stand with us. Nope. The Republican Party can't stand with you. 
the caucus cannot stand with you. The president cannot stand with you. The president's got to stand by himself. Senator so-and-so's got to stand by himself. Representative so-and-so's got to stand by herself. Governor so-and-so's got to stand by himself. We all must stand before the Lord and give an account. And God's going to judge us on how we treated one another. God's going to judge us on what we did with Jesus. God's going God's to judge those people who made those lip declarations. They declare with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, but in their heart they did not receive Jesus and, and did not turn from their sins and from their wicked ways. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very critical preaching. These are very critical times. These are the last days. They're not going to get any better. They're going to get worse. And so make up your mind right now. Make up your mind right now. Uh, who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? Make up your mind. Choose. Be like Joshua who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, Jackie and I, we're loving one another. We're wishing one another happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, we do that every uh, February around this time. But, but we try to love each other each day. Not, we just don't wait to uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, she shows me every day in, in some kind of way that she loves me, and I try to do the same. And so that love is, is permanent. We made vows to one another. And ladies and gentlemen, most of all, we made vows to the Lord. We made vows to the Lord. Even before we met each other, we made vows to the Lord that Jesus Christ will be first in our lives. And that means we've got to say no to anything that's not of the Lord and deny anything that's not of the Lord. And we've got to stay awoke, stay alert, and, 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 and study this word of God and pray and fast and know the wiles of the devil because the devil is wily. He's tricky. He'll use anything and anyone he can to try to destroy you and me. And so it pays to be born again, ladies and gentlemen. And then once you're born again, live holy unto God. Make your commitment. It's a daily walk with the Lord. Make your commitment. The songwriter said, I made a vow unto the Lord. I promised him I would go every step of the way. I made a vow to the Lord. The songwriter said, sometimes old Satan gets on my track. He tries so many ways to turn me back. But I promised God I would go every step of the way. I made a vow unto the Lord. I want to ask you, and the songwriter in that last verse of that song, did you make a vow unto the Lord? Did you make a vow unto the Lord? Did you promise him you would go every step of the way? Did you make a vow to the Lord? Well, perhaps you have made a vow unto the Lord and you broke it and you, you allowed bitterness to come into your life. Somebody did something to you. Somebody said something to you. Somebody disappointed you. Somebody frustrated you. Uh, uh, Satan blindsided you. Uh, took a loved one from you. Uh, you lost your job. You lost your home. You lost your health. And, and you've turned bitter. Well, repent. 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 God's not going to let you into heaven with bitterness in your heart. God's not going to let you into heaven with, with anger in your heart. God's gonna let, not going to let you or me into heaven if we've got unforgiveness, unforgiveness in our heart. So repent. Tell God you're sorry. Ask God to forgive you. Uh, I have to do this. Ask God to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And then, and then return unto the Lord. Get back in church. Get back in church. Go on back to First Baptist. Go on back to Second Pentecostal. Go on back to uh, uh, your fellowship, your local fellowship, and, 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 and stand before that congregation and tell them, hey, I was angry with you all and because of something that was done and said, but I, I repented and I have no bitterness, no anger, and I'm here 
to do my part and to love on you all, to love you and to, to love the Lord with all my heart. Get on back. Get on back where God has planted you. Get on back into teaching Sunday school. Get on back into uh, being a part of the prayer band. Many churches don't have prayer services. Help them to develop a prayer service. Help them to build up the, the Sunday school. Help them uh, go on back to church and help them with the, the food ministry to feed the hungry, the soup kitchen, the bread ministry. There are things uh, that God wants you to do. He's called you to do. There are things that churches need to be doing and, and they're not doing, but it's going to take bold people like you and me to get back. It's going to take bold people like Dustina Branham. It's going to take bold people like Christy Carpenter. Uh, going to take bold people like Melanie Bias. going to take bold people like Jackie Carter. going to take bold people like Christina McDaniel. going to take bold people to get back where God wants them to be. Yes, Wes Carter, you too. Uh, Lorraine, Stacy, my children. going to take bold people who are going to get back where God has planted them and even love the people who hurt you the most. Yes, love the very people who talked about you. Love the very people who shamed you. Love the very people who deliberately hurt you. Love them. Forgive them. Hold no bitterness. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. And we see Jesus born of a virgin, born without sin, we see him accused and falsely accused. We see false witnesses coming against him. At least in Jesus' trial, they did have witnesses. They were false witnesses, but they had witnesses. We just finished a trial here in the United States where uh, they wouldn't even bring in witnesses. But Jesus has false witnesses there, accused him, of, he said he's the son of God, and they accused him of blasphemy. Well, he spoke the truth. He is the son of God. But yet they put him to death. And why did they put him to death? Because the Bible had prophesied long before Jesus was put on the cross. The Bible says Isaiah wrote 800 years before Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah let us know that he had to die on the cross, and the prophets prophesied that the Messiah would come. Many of the Jews at that time denied Jesus as being the Messiah. They missed the bus. But as these children on my coffee cup are praying, Dear God, if we miss the bus, will you send another one? God sending another bus for the Jewish people. But there will be no second bus for you or for me. There will be no second bus. If you die without Jesus Christ in your life, there's only one choice, the one alternative. The Lord will have to send you to hell. It is your choice. God's not going to put you in the hell. You choose. The, even if you don't choose in this life, you make your choice. And if you miss the bus during this life, there's no other opportunity. No, no, no. A disregard what the Roman Catholics have been preaching, that there's a purgatory and people can buy you out of purgatory or pray you out of purgatory. No, no. Once you die, there is... No other opportunity. For it is appointed unto every man to die. The scripture says it is appointed unto every man once to die. And then after the death comes the judgment. We've got to stand in the judgment. We've got to give an account. Did you receive Jesus as Lord? And if you received him, did you stay with Jesus? Did you backslide? Did you allow bitterness to separate you from the love of God? Did you allow bitterness to separate you from loving others? While you hear my voice, 
Repent. Because it's the voice of the Spirit of God speaking through me. Repent. Confess your sins. Confess your sins while you can. Ladies and gentlemen, people are dying around us like flies. Like flies. Just this week, my older brother passed. Just yesterday, one of my high school classmates. Uh, and, 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 and I'm getting reports from all over the country of people who are dying, reading obituaries. I mean, these are people I know, even in my family. And ladies and gentlemen, I can't answer for people in my family. I can't answer for people in your family. Unless a person is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And ladies and gentlemen, once you're dead, if, if you die without Christ in your life, that means you will spend eternity burning in hell, in torment. It's a place of torment. Hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. So repent, repent. I thank God, I bless God that God gave me a vision this week, uh, just two days before my brother passed. And my brother was walking up in the clouds with his arms wide open, smiling. And I saw Jesus walking in the clouds to meet him. And the Lord said, he's mine. So that's a consolation. But everybody doesn't get that peace, that consolation. Get saved now. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got friends, you and I, in nursing homes and hospitals. We've got friends confined to beds. And even in this younger generation, we've got families where people are committing suicide. Young children are committing suicide. Young people, Satan's got them marring with their body, uh, taking opioids and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the last days. Share the love of Jesus Christ. Let us return to loving one another. Don't miss the bus. Ladies and gentlemen, don't miss the bus of opportunity to share the love of Jesus Christ with somebody else. Don't miss the bus. And don't miss the bus to get saved. Stop the backsliding. Repent. Repent now. Repent now. There are some of you listening. You need to repent today. Repent. Tell God, I'm sorry that I sinned. You know your sin. God knows your sin. Tell God you're sorry. Ask God to deliver you and forgive you and set you free. Then return to loving Jesus Christ. And then when you return to loving Jesus Christ, return to loving your brothers and your sisters and loving mankind. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. And I pray that this message has helped you. And if you have never been saved, you can be saved today. What must I do to be saved, you may ask? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Commit your ways unto the Lord and he will establish you. Ask Jesus today to come into your life and receive him by faith. Remember, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and live with him and he with me. May God bless you. Praise God. We ask those of you who are online with us, stay online. Let's chat and chew. Uh, there might be some questions you uh, may have that I can ask, answer. And uh, if you need prayer, we'd love to pray for you. Praise God. You can get the recordings of these messages on my website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com or on YouTube. Uh, slash Leroy Carter, or send me an email message. Praise God. We thank God for you. May God bless you. May God keep you.